You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Today's podcast is going to be a fun, lighthearted one. Myers-Briggs personality types and zodiac signs. Specifically, is there any correlation between the two? My brief answer is no, there is not. Astrology isn't a hard science, though it may seem like it's scientific. It uses scientific-sounding tools like charts and positions of the planets and the sun and the moon to explain personality traits and to predict the future. And though there are some people who claim it is supported by evidence, astrology isn't a hard science in the sense that the people using it don't evaluate evidence to support whether or not their hypotheses are valid and modify them as required. And this is a key part of science. I'm not going to say it's not useful or fun for some people, though. Astrology can enhance our self-awareness, and it can be a great way to start a meaningful conversation. So how about the Myers-Briggs? There are some people out there who believe the MBTI assessment is nothing more than a horoscope. In fact, a quick Google search will bring up all kinds of articles about why it's meaningless or bogus. Obviously, my views on this subject are that the instrument is helpful, but it's helpful in so much as it is utilized and interpreted correctly. Unfortunately, there's a lot of pervasive misunderstanding about what the Myers-Briggs measures and a lot of misuse in terms of using it for such purposes as to predict performance at work or happiness in relationships. It was never intended to be a predictive measure of anything, and I continue to be disappointed to see these misunderstandings perpetuated. For more on my view of the utility of the Myers-Briggs assessment, please see the article Myers-Briggs Myths and Misuse available on my website, www.atopcareer.com. Now, as for Myers-Briggs types and Zodiac types correlating, what I'm going to talk about in this podcast is only my opinion based on my knowledge of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Please note, folks, I am not an astrologer and I really know next to nothing about astrology. So I'm choosing to go by what I read online. If you Google Myers-Briggs personality types and zodiac signs correlation, you'll get all sorts of information, none of which is consistent. Definitions of zodiac signs are being taken from a compilation of sources, namely astrology.com, Cafe Astro, and Linda Goodman Sun Signs. Please note that these are just my opinions, and it's nothing more than a fun comparison. Let's start with Aries. Aries are known as enthusiastic, adventurous, passionate, courageous, possibly a risk taker, and humorous. They're strong-willed and ambitious, they have high expectations, a need to be recognized, may be boastful, and may come across as self-centered and ultimately push people away, ironically depriving them of the very attention they seek. Aries have great ideas and creative minds and the potential to be a great leader if they take the time to actually listen to people and genuinely engage with them. ENTJ is the Myers-Briggs type I believe most reflects Aries as described this way. ENTJs are confident and born to lead. They may alienate others with their domineering spirit, but they really just want to get things done their way and get things done they do. ENTJs often have many different jobs or projects going on at once, and they are in charge of all of them. Let's look at Taurus next. Taurus folks are known for stubbornness. This may come across as not seeing others' opinions as worthy simply because they're not their own. In other words, they assume that their own subjective truths are the only truths. They can also be a bit dependent. On the plus side, Tauruses are known as moral and ethical people, romantic, diligent, and perseverant, and talented in art. To me, this sounds a lot like the INFJ type. INFJs are nurturing and emotional, deeply intuitive about matters pertaining to people and their motivations, if they are interested in the people. If not, or if you wrong the INFJ in some way, you'll probably never hear from them again. They are complex people. They can be warm and protective, but also secretive and perfectionist, which is where the stubbornness comes in. And they do have a natural affinity for art. Next is the Gemini. These folks are known for being two-faced, meaning they switch it up so much that they might as well be two different people. Interestingly, though, it's not so much that they're fake, 
but that they're genuine, living and acting in the moment according to whatever their current attitude is. They're cheerful, charming, quick-witted, but may be fickle and gossipy. Gemini get themselves into trouble for seeming superficial, especially because they tend to forget plans or not delving deep into conversations. This sounds a lot like ESFP, but I could make a case for ESTP as well. Both are adaptable and do well with new people in unfamiliar environments by using their excellent social skills. They bring fun to somber environments, are action-oriented, but can be known for not taking things as seriously as they should. Next on the list is Cancer. These folks are extremely sensitive to emotion. They're caring, empathetic, and gentle souls with motherly instincts, and apparently this is also where their telltale crabbiness comes from. Cancers are moody. They lash out when things get to be too much, and others end up bearing the brunt of their wrath. However, their loving nature and dedication to loved ones are their best traits. They just need to be mindful of their possessive tendencies and sensitivity. I'm going to say this sounds a lot like the ISFJ personality type. ISFJs live in an inner world where they store away information about people and things that are important to them, and they have a very clear idea of how things should be, and they strive to attain that. They take criticism personally and may be conflict avoidant, and if forced into it, they become crabby. They may also become crabby if things aren't organized or if they're forced to change and disrupt their routines. Let's move on to Leo. Words to describe Leo are fiery, dazzling, and proud. They may be seen as arrogant or indulgent, overly demanding of attention. Their egos are supposedly the biggest of all the zodiac signs, but that means they're also the most fragile. Leos are natural performers, and on the plus side, they're charismatic, generous, and lovable. When Leos are using their gifts for the best, they're enthusiastic about letting other people shine as much as they do. For this one, I could make a case for ESTJ and possibly ESFJ. Both have set ideas of how the world needs to run. Both thrive when they're in the spotlight and both are natural leaders. Therefore, both can be bossy in different ways. For ESTJ, it's bossy with efficiency in mind. And with ESFJ, it's bossy with you, the person, in mind. However, both are very social and very welcoming and inclusive, and both will be at their best when they're in control of whatever social or professional situation they're overseeing, and others will love to be around them when they're in their element. Virgos. Virgos, at your best, you're diligent, considerate, and practical. You make sure your loved ones are content. At your worst, you're a perfectionist who fixates on unnecessary details. These OCD tendencies are often used to improve things at work or at home, even if you forget to take care of yourself. You'll go above and beyond, and you'll have a sharp eye for picking up on flaws, so be careful to point out the positive as well. You can be overly critical. At the same time, you can come up with the most ingenious solutions and observations. Just be sure people are ready to hear them. This sounds most like the INTP type. INTPs are great analysts, highly creative and able to pick up on intricacies others miss, looking for the most efficient way to the truth. They can also be absent-minded and insensitive to others, neglecting to share how they got from point A to point D. They may be clueless or fearful in emotionally charged situations, but there's no better person to call on to check the validity of an idea or apply a principle to a new solution. Moving on to Libra. Libras are social butterflies who are masters at making and keeping new friends. They're naturally accommodating, which is where the balance comes in. This balance keeps them going as they're naturally attuned to pleasing others. They're charming, kind-hearted, equitable, with great aesthetic taste. On the downside, when their feelings aren't reciprocated, Libras can feel like they've not been treated fairly. They're also prone to narcissism, dependency, and being a freewheeler, but they're loved for their wit and social graces, just like the ENFJ and quite possibly the ESFJ. Both are warm and supportive of other people, 
and their own emotions are strongly influenced by other people's emotions. They're driven to maintain social structure, particularly in regard to social conscious. They may take conflict personally, however, or may go to extreme lengths, like becoming a martyr to maintain external harmony. Yet, there is no one better to be a crusader as they are so actively concerned for others' needs and values. Now to Scorpios. Scorpios are mysterious, and they love getting to the bottom of a good mystery. They find the deeper meaning in everything. Essentially, anything other people ignore or are unaware of, Scorpios fixate on. They have very powerful unconscious minds. They also tend to be rational, intelligent, intuitive, and independent. On the downside, they're seen as complicated, arrogant, suspicious, and at times, way too intense. They're truth seekers who may just need to remember to relax. Not everything or everyone has a hidden agenda. This sounds a lot like an INTJ. INTJs are mentally quick and insightful, and they're very determined to implement their plans regardless of what other people think. They're at their best when they can work independently, but they don't always have the best people skills, and they may ignore other people's ideas or styles if they don't fit into their own worldview. They may also become so wrapped up in their inner worlds that they're oblivious to their physical surroundings. On the other hand, INTJs are typically excellent problem solvers, always able to see where a process can be improved and come up with ingenious ways to do so. Sagittarius is next on the list. Sagittarians are adventurous, known for blasting themselves out of their comfort zones and known for doing bold things that they somehow always surpass. On the positive side, they're optimistic, insightful, and lively. On the negative, they may be forgetful, careless, or come across as a know-it-all who tactlessly denounces other people's viewpoints or opinions. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this sounds most like the ENFP type. ENFPs are fun, lively, adventurous-seeking people. They have great imaginations and love to tell stories, and they tend to have a contagious enthusiasm that naturally draws others to them. As for weaknesses, they're not always very practical. They may have shiny new object syndrome, so they may leave projects unfinished and not focus or follow through. ENFPs who are less mature may get stressed out easily and not realize how their stress or their highly emotional natures negatively affect the people around them. When they're at their best, they're using their people skills to motivate and learn about others and participate in artistic pursuits like community theater, music, and travel. Capricorn. These folks are known to be the hardest workers of the zodiac signs and definitely the most serious. They have incredible discipline and drive to working their way to the top. Known to be persistent, reliable, and intelligent, they can also be too strict, putting up a stone-cold demeanor that others find unapproachable. In their quests to rise to the top, Capricorns may neglect their loved ones and need to be reminded that the view from the top is great, but it would be nicer if they have special friends and family to share it with. This sounds most like the ISTJ type. These folks have a strong internal sense of duty, which leads them to have a very serious demeanor. Because they're not naturally in tune with their feelings or the feelings of others, they may take other people for granted. They may also be judgmental and overly structured, But when they're using their powers for good, ISTJs are extremely capable, dependable, and logical in whatever they do, which is almost always working efficiently toward their goals, planning ahead, and following rules and procedures. Next is Aquarius. True to their nature, Aquarians love to stand out, love to talk, and force others to reconsider their stance on an issue. They're true rebels, born to assert their independence and gain recognition for their viewpoints. At the same time, they're progressive humanitarians who come up with truly unique ideas when their eccentricity doesn't get in the way. Aquarians can also alienate themselves, even when their intentions are good. They may also be too hasty and change their opinions too frequently to be taken seriously, much like the ENTP. 
ENTPs are innovators trying to find clever new solutions to challenging problems. They are extremely independent, craving autonomy and freedom, and they typically have great verbal skills, especially with regards to convincing others to take a chance on their clever new ideas. Admittedly, they may have trouble with follow through, and they may place more emphasis on facts than people. They're open minded and may be absent minded. They're intellectuals and risk takers. They may be way too confident in their own abilities, coming across as arrogant and pompous. On the other hand, they're closet humanitarians and want to use their wit to help tackle the problems of the world, just in an out of the box kind of way. Last is Pisces. These are the folks most apt to tuck themselves away in their own little worlds, lost in their daydreams. They're so attuned to major shifts in the emotional atmosphere, most people won't recognize, but to the Pisces are blaring sirens and flashing lights. They're aesthetic, kind, and dedicated with vivid imaginations and creative minds, but have the tendency to become reclusive, indecisive, overly sentimental, and unrealistic. For this one, I'll make a case for INFP or ISFP. Both of these types make their decisions based on their own internal world of very personal values, which they'll typically only share with one or two other trusted people. They seek inner harmony and have a keen awareness of the needs of other people and naturally create emotionally supportive environments. Both most likely have some kind of artistic gift crafts, music, writing, dance, etc. INFPs and ISFPs, because they are such sensitive souls, may not bode well to people or situations that directly conflict with their value system and may be conflict avoidant or may even cut off relationships with people because of a perceived violation to their value system. They may be seen as indecisive or having their heads in the clouds. At their best, they're using their authenticity to serve as an ethical backbone or a non judgmental sounding board. There you have it, folks my interpretation of the correlation between Myers Briggs types and zodiac signs. A caveat this podcast isn't to imply that your zodiac sign automatically means you're a particular Myers Briggs type or vice versa. This is just another fun, lighthearted way to talk about personality type theory. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time, MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.